fuck? I'm 78 fucking years old. Why should I put up with this shit? I'm gonna make no difference whatsoever. Because the only thing it will ultimately come to is that, well, this guy's been a fucking crazy all his life. Definitely when I first saw it, I never imagined that I would make a film about it, you know? But, um, but it came into my life the way that I have passed it to many other people in my life, which is, you know, after a couple drinks out at the bar, somebody's like, hey, you gotta see this clip. And, and they uh, show you the clip, and, and I got it on VHS tape way back in, I think, 2001. And sure enough, it came on, and it was the funniest thing I'd ever, I just couldn't believe how funny it was. There were so many elements to it that were hilarious, that it seemed fake, it seemed false. For that reason, you know, it's a it's an old guy with a mustache and a Winnebago, swearing a blue streak. But it's in this way that's so eloquent, and it just is nonstop. My introduction to Jack Redney came in the form of a VHS tape, a bootleg compilation of outtakes from a Winnebago sales video made in 1989. All right, here we go. Dad, uh, what do you mean? I got to be able to move. That's crazy. Here we go. <sighs> the Winnebago Concepts and Engineering Departments have developed a multifunctional bathroom. Privacy, I don't even know what the fuck I'm reading. Um, it wasn't until our second trip up to, to meet Jack that it was clear that it was becoming about me as a character. And I, I work with this great cinematographer named Barrett Mater, who's my business partner in Austin. And as we were filming, he would just sort of, he just kind of kept filming me. You know, it'd be like if your cameraman here just sort of started, it became about you and I sort of fighting it out in an interview. And, uh, and we never really talked about it, and I could feel it happening. And it was, it just was one of those things where I was like, okay, I, this is the story, and we have to follow the story, and this is where it's going. I gotta read it again because my mind is just a piece of shit this morning. Oh, I've seen this before. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, I've seen this like hundreds of times, man. This guy's, I mean, this guy's like a legend, basically. I mean. Soon after I got the tape, I found out that I wasn't the only one fascinated with Jack Rebney. I don't think I can remember the first time I've seen it because I've seen it, you know, several hundred times, so. It sort of all blurs together. I just started like bringing it everywhere in my backpack just to like put it on. Like I'd show it to someone and then I wouldn't see them for a year and I'd see them and they'd go, no more. You come upon someone that's seen it and you speak the same language. You just start quoting, my mind is a piece of shit this morning, I'm blinded by this hot light. I'm blinded by that fucking hot light. You know, a lot of people say that that's their favorite moment, that that's when, when, when I get the phone call. And I actually, I guess I don't want to give this away in the interview because I want people to see the film. But, um, but yeah, certainly there's a huge twist in the middle of the movie that throws people for a loop, and, and it threw me for a loop. And I, and I would hope that some of the appeal of watching our film is that you really go on this journey with me. You know, you feel like you experience all the twists and turns that I experienced making it. And I think that's a large part of the fun of watching it. Tony, do me a favor, will you please? Will you? Will you, will you do me a kindness? Leave. Yeah. I think I want to be walking in and out if you're going to fuck up and I got to come back. I don't that make any difference to me at this juncture. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Tony. Don't slam the fucking door. No more. In uh, the other six short documentaries that I've made, I have no problem, as I'm sure you don't, with your camera right now and your cameraman. And when you interview somebody, you ask them personal questions about themselves. And just like I'm blabbering here, you know, I'll tell you anything you want to know about me. You know, like now that I have your attention, I'll tell you a lot, right? And especially in with our generation, with Facebook and YouTube, and we we post and upload things that are very personal without thinking about it. And and now Jack, from being from a generation that made media in the 50s and 60s, that idea that you would share your personal life on this sort of global scale and that you would want to be known for things that happen in your personal life is very foreign and very you know that's very unusual and that's not something that's attractive to him particularly because he's been you know 
he's, he's already had media take advantage of him to some degree. Don't, oh, don't, 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 come on, don't, don't tell You me know what this is, this is about who you are and what your oh, past experiences oh, have been. No, no. And what you've learned. Oh, well, like, sure, you want to talk about me? Yeah. Oh, I, wonderful. I'm trying to talk about you yeah, and you're not well, letting me I talk about Yeah, well, I don't. Why not? That's what I'm asking you. That's what I don't understand. Ben, if you don't like it, pack up, get the fuck out.